Hello class, welcome to lecture 21 and in this lecture we're going to be discussing the concept of buoyancy and looking at how that uh, that concept plays a role in the atmosphere. So with that let's go ahead and take a look at the concept of buoyancy to start off with. So the whole idea behind buoyancy is that if you submerge an object in a fluid, be that a liquid or a gas, so that could be water or just a regular atmosphere, if you submerge an object in a fluid, then that object will experience an upward force, which is equivalent to the weight of fluid that it, it displaces. Or put in more compact terms, the buoyant force acting on an object is equal to the weight of the fluid that, it's dis that it displaces. So this might seem like kind of a garbled, mumbled, jumbo, not making a whole lot of sense. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example of this. So let's consider, that, say we have a rock and we have some sort of container full of water. If we submerge that rock in the water, and let's say the rock displaces 35 newtons worth of water. So if you were to take the water that was displaced by the rock and weigh it, you would get a weight of 35 newtons. And by the concept of buoyancy, if the water, if the rock displaces 35 newtons worth of water, then the buoyant force acting on the rock, that is the force that wants to push the rock back up to the surface, that buoyant force is equal to 35 newtons. The same force as a, the, the force acting on the rock is the same as the amount of weight of fluid that the rock has displaced. So if you submerge a rock in water and you displace 35 newtons worth of water, then the buoyant force acting on the rock is going to be 35 newtons. So there's an upward force of 35 newtons acting on the rock here that's trying to carry the rock out of the water. So this whole concept of buoyancy is kind of an extension of Newton's third law. Uh, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. But this also kind of stems into the fact that a very common theme that Mother Nature does not like disturbances. If you do something to disturb the balance of something, then there's going to be some sort of response to bring things back to the way they were. And in the case of submerging a rock in water, again, just using the example of rock and water in this case, uh, there's going to be some sort of force that tries to get the rock out of the water. It doesn't. Uh, Mother Nature doesn't like the fact that the rock's in the water. And of course, if the buoyant force is greater than the force of weight, so the there are two main forces that we're looking at here, the buoyant force, which is trying to push the rock upward, and the force of weight, which is bringing the rock downward. If the buoyant force is greater than the force of weight, then the rock will want to float back up to the surface, otherwise the rock will stay submerged. So let's go ahead and tie this back to the atmosphere for a minute, because the atmosphere is also a fluid. And believe it or not, uh, by being submerged in the atmosphere, you are experiencing a buoyant force right now as we speak. But it's really, really, it's a really, really weak buoyant force. It's not something that you can really sense. It's not something that's really perceivable. But it is there. It is a, there is a buoyant force acting on you that's trying to move you up into the atmosphere. But your force of weight is much, much greater than that buoyant force. So you don't really, you don't, really, you don't really experience that. But let's consider for our atmospheric case. Let's consider an air parcel, which is we can just basically call that a blob of air. And let's take a look at how the buoyant force plays into a blob of air that's got some sort of different density than its surroundings. So here, uh, the surrounding air, which typically we refer to as the environmental air, uh, we're going to represent that as a density and uh, some sort of mass. And then the, par the uh, properties of our air parcel, which have slightly different properties, we're going to denote that as having a mass m prime and a density rho prime. So the prime terms represent our air parcel's properties, and the unprime terms represent the properties of its surroundings, which we typically refer to as the environment. Excuse me. So if we take a look at the forces acting on our air parcel, just the same two forces that we mentioned in the previous slide. So there's two forces that we're going to worry about with this air parcel. One is the force of gravity. So the weight of this air parcel, the, uh, the force of weight acting on this air parcel, which is uh, directed downward. And of course, the buoyant force, which is trying to force the air parcel upward. So those are the two forces that we're going to concern ourselves with. And if we want to, we can get sort of a basic conceptual model or basic model on this uh, what this air parcel will want to do if we invoke Newton's second law on these two forces that we define here. So way back in lecture one, we introduced the idea of Newton's second law, which is the net acceleration acting on an object is equal to uh, the net force, or yeah, is equal to the net force acting on the object divided by mass. Or put more in terms of what's on the screen here, the mass times the acceleration of an object is equal to the net force acting on it, or the sum of all the forces acting on it. So here we only have two forces that we have to work uh, that we have to worry about, and those two forces are all acting in the z direction. They're all acting in the vertical vertical direction. So our equation becomes really simple. So mass times acceleration, and this acceleration is in fact in the z direction. Uh, it's just 
Uh, we're just going to leave that as something that's implied. So the mass of our air parcel in question. So we're trying to model the air parcel here, and we're invoking Newton's second law on the air parcel. So what we want is we want the uh, we want the mass of the air parcel. Uh, we want to we want to determine whether the air parcel is going to accelerate upward or we want or wants to accelerate downward, and that acceleration is going to be determined by the net force acting on it. In this case, there's two forces that are opposing each other. One is the buoyant force, which is pointing upward, and upward we define as something being positive, and then the force of weight, which is pointing downward, which is uh, going to be represented as force in, as uh, something negative because it's pointing in the negative z direction. And force of gravity and force of weight in this case are just the same thing. And if we rewrite this equation using the conventions that we defined up here, so the uh, since we're concerning ourselves with the air parcel itself, this m just becomes m prime, the mass of the air parcel times the acceleration of the air parcel, is equal to the force, the buoyant force. So um, if you displace some amount, so if this air parcel displaces some amount of its environment, then the buoyant force is just going to be the weight of how much it displaces. So this right here is the weight of environmental air that's displaced by this air parcel, which is again our buoyant force. And then minus the force of weight of the air parcel itself. Now it might be kind of confusing, uh, might be kind of confusing understanding where exactly this term comes from, but again just think back to the simple example we started with. If our air parcel is displacing say 10 newtons worth of air, then the buoyant force acting on the air parcel is also going to be 10 newtons. So if we displace some weight of air, that same number is going to be the amount of newtons, the amount of force that's trying to displace our air parcel upward. And working with mass is not something that's very desirable, so what we're going to try and do is we're going to use density to eliminate mass from this equation. So if we use the fact that density is equal to mass over volume, we can solve for mass to get uh, we can solve for mass to get an expression for mass. So mass is equal to density times volume. And if we substitute those values into our equation up here, then we get that the density of the air parcel times the volume of the air parcel times the acceleration of the air parcel is equal to, the density of the surrounding air times the volume displaced, how much volume of the surrounding air is displaced times gravity minus the density of the air parcel times the volume of the air parcel times acceleration due to gravity. And we can do something to simplify this down. One thing that we can do is we can assume an incompressible atmosphere, which basically allows us to eliminate volume from this equation. So we're going to make an approximation that's sort of goes as follows. If we displace one cubic meter of air, if uh, the air parcel is one cubic meter of air, then we displace one cubic meter of air. And that's just an approximation that we're going to make to sort of simplify the math here. So by doing that, that allows us to factor out volume and eliminate it entirely so that we're left with the density of the air parcel times acceleration is equal to uh, the density of the surrounding air times gravity minus the density of the air parcel times gravity. And the main thing that we're interested in is this acceleration term. We want to know if the air parcel is going to accelerate upward or downward for a given values of density for the air parcel itself and the environment. So that's what we're going to go ahead and solve for. Acceleration is equal to gravity times density of environment times density of air parcel divided by density of air parcel. And again, we don't like working with density either, so let's do something to eliminate density. And the, what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing that we did for the hip symmetric equation. We're going to use the ideal gas law to eliminate density. So just doing some algebra, we get that density is equal to pressure divided by uh, dry air gas constant times. We're going to use virtual temperature here to account for moisture content as well. And if we plug that into the above e equation here, we get this lovely mess. And this might seem like something really ugly, but believe it or not, this can actually simplify down into something really simple. So one step to simplifying things down is we can assume that the pressure of the air parcel is approximately equal to the pressure of the surrounding air. This is not always a good assumption, but it's usually good enough. So let's go ahead and assume that P is approximately equal to P prime. That is the pressure of the environment is approximately equal to the pressure of the air parcel. And if we make that assumption, this allows us to factor out this common factor of pressure as well as the dry air gas constant, which we can then eliminate from the equation here, so that we're left with just this. 1 over temperature of environment minus 1 over temperature of air parcel divided by 1 over temperature of air parcel is times gravity. All that times gravity is equal to the net acceleration of our air parcel. And if we do a little bit of algebra, we can simplify that down so we can bring this, uh, we can bring this term up to the numerator. And by doing that, and then doing some algebra, we get this. 
and in doing some more algebra, we get this as the end result. So the acceleration is equal to gravity times the virtual temperature of the air parcel minus the temperature of the environment divided by the temperature of the environment. And sometimes this term specifically is represented as capital B, which is uh, often referred to as the buoyancy term. And this makes sense because if our temperature of our air parcel is warmer than the environment, that's going to result in a net upward force. The air parcel is going to want to rise. That gives us a positive acceleration here. And if we consider, say, a uh, case where the air parcel is cooler than its environment, that's going to give us a negative on the right-hand side of this equation, which is going to give us a negative acceleration, so the air parcel is going to want to sink back down. But that's going to do it for this first segment on buoyancy, and in the next several segments we will explore this concept a little bit further and take a look at some parameterizations of buoyancy in the atmosphere. So with that, I will see you all in the next segment.